In this video, I'm going to show you how you can save thousands of dollars by not using lovable cloud AI and instead using your own AI API key. Now, the problem with lovable cloud AI is they are obviously adding their own profit margin to the AI credits that you are spending in your application whenever your users are generating stuff. Now, the problem about that is if you have lots of users, lots of AI requests, you're going to pay lots of money that is 100% unnecessarily. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a scalable, stable, best practice solution that will save you thousands of dollars. So let's take a look at this. So instead of just going to Lovable and telling it to build an AI based application, we're going to use our own open AI API key. So how do you get that? First of all, you go to openaicom slash API, and then you create your API account, you load a little bit of money on here, there is no auto billing unless you enable it. So you're not going to get surprise invoices. But if you want to have automatic top ups to make sure that your application keeps running, if you run out of credits, that's taken care of where with lovable, uh, you may be running at the risk of running out of credits and then not upgrading because you're sleeping and it's midnight and your application being temporarily down. So if you really care about scale, this is a better solution. Because if you have the budget, if you have at least a limit on your credit card, though, you can add auto top up. So there's no service disruption, which is always the best way of setting it up, owning the integration. So now let's set this up. How do we do this? Now let's say we're using OpenAI. Let's say build an AI poem, poem generator using, using the OpenAI API. Do not use lovable AI, right? This is very important. You got to say, using open AI API, this tells lovable to use the official API from open AI, you go directly to open AI, and you're cutting out the middleman in this example, you can still use lovable for the web application setup, even for your backend, but for AI processing, there is no need to pay additionally on top of that, and then just get secondary class service out of it. Because you know, with auto top ups and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm just going to add, do not use lovable AI. That's very important. So now we're going to send this to lovable. And now it's going to set this up. So this will now take a little bit. And in the meantime, I want to show you how you can explore the open AI API even a little bit more to get more ideas and what you can do with it. So if you go here to your dashboard, you will see you have API reference docs and dashboard. If you go to the dashboard here, you can demo some prompts and you have even agent builder, you can play with generating images, you can play with generating videos, and all that kind of stuff. What's very cool is that you can go into the chat here. And you can create a new chat. And you can kind of like you have like a little playground where you can test prompts and see which work better lovable itself doesn't give you this. So this will allow you to fine tune the integrations and the AI automations that you're setting up. Now, if you want a second video, just on that, let me know. We'll make a video about that. But for now, I just want to show you the basic setup here. So if we now go back into lovable, it's saying following, I'll create an elegant AI poem generator using the open AI API, this involves and blah, 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 it now enabled lovable cloud, we want that, but it didn't enable lovable AI, because we're not going to pay um, an upcharge for it now. So it now asks us for the open AI API key. So where do we get that? We just go to the platform.openai.com. And inside of here, we go to our settings, right? We go to the steering wheel, the setting wheel here. And then we see organization, general API keys, and we go to API keys. And now we can go on create new API secret. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. So it's easier for you to see. Let's create a new API secret. Okay, now I'm going to call this lovable cloud. So I know this is from a lovable cloud application, you could also put your um, app name in here. So you can see exactly which 
application is using which amounts of credits and how much is actually costing you each of the applications to give you just a little bit of a better observation about your costs going on here. So let's select our default project here. Let's create the secret key. And now it generates the API key. We're just going to copy this API key. We go back to Lovable and in this field here, we'll paste it and submit. There you go. Now it's going to set this integration up. It's going to use the official OpenAI API, the OpenAI integration. And we're not going to pay an upcharge for using Lovable's abstraction. We're going to get access to more AI models, more complex ones. We're going to have more features available to us. We're going to have better observability. We can see more precise logging. For example, if I'm going to go on done here, right? And I'm going to my dashboard in OpenAI, we have all those advanced features here, but we also have logs. So we'll be able to see what's happening in our application, the completions, if we enable this, and we're going to have better observability on the AI content happening in our application. And we're going to have more features, more insights than the lovable dashboard would give us, which is what you want when you're trying to scale your application and you're trying to be as, you know, platform agnostic as possible because now you own the application, you're going straight to the vendor that provides the AI and not through the middleman. So now if we take a look at Lovable, you can see it's already building a beautiful interface. This is what it's really good at. And now it's setting everything up on the front end and on the back end. And now as you can see, we are done with this. So it is using Lovable AI here, right? Uh, but it's not using Lovable AI. So it's using Lovable Cloud with our AI integration, but not Lovable AI, which runs it through Lovable, giving you less settings and at the end of the day, costing you more because you can optimize really what models you're using and it's going to be quite limited. So how is it now set up? If you go to Lovable Cloud or Superbase, it's the same. And you take a look at edge functions here. You see that we are doing a custom edge function in here that is calling the OpenAI API. And if we go to secrets, we will see our OpenAI API key is set in here as a secret. So it's using the official OpenAI integration. It's a safe, secure integration, but it's costing us way less money because we can then optimize what model we're using. We're going to have broader access to all kinds of models. And we have more detailed logging when it comes to AI generations. And we have more features at the end of the day. So let's do um, a poem about a cat. Um, let's do sonnet, haiku, poetry style. Let's do acrostic. Let's generate the poem. And now what it's doing, it's calling OpenAI and it will generate the poem. And we should see that this is now working. Now, if you want a little bit more insights on how it's working and if it's working, you will be able to take a look at the console. Now, as you can see, it failed to generate the poem. And this can sometimes happen when you are doing a custom integration because it doesn't, may, it may not have all the latest documentation on how to set it up, but it is still the best way of setting it up, even though it may be a little bit more work. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to open the preview in a new tab here by clicking on here. And now I'm going to show you how to be a developer. And it's actually very simple. So first of all, let's go on inspect elements. You just do a two finger click on your application and then you inspect or right click. Okay. And now we go on the network tab. So you see those tabs up here, network performance memory, we go on network and now we do demo and we're generating a poem. Now, as you can see, we are now having this API here generate poem. It calls the edge function. You can click in it to get some information. Now, as you can see, um, this response here is empty. It doesn't give us any data. So for some reason, uh, it seems to be failing. So why it's failing, we don't know, but it doesn't give us anything back. So how do we now know what's broken? We can simply go into Lovable and go into chat mode. And I'm going to say, take a, take a look at the AI edge function. Why is it failing? 
it's important that you ask this in chat mode because then it can go into your backend, take a look at the locks over there and see what's going on. Now, while it's doing that, we can also go into OpenAI and we can take a look if we're seeing some locks over here. Now, it could be that it's failing on the OpenAI side, or it could be that it's failing on the lovable side. If it's failing on the lovable side, we wouldn't see anything inside of here, which I'm not seeing anything inside of here. So it seems that lovable has an issue creating the connection. So let's take a look at this. Now lovable is saying following. I can see the issue looking at the logs and network requests. The edge function is successfully calling OpenAI and retrieving a response, but the poem is coming back empty. Let me examine the edge function. I found the issue. The edge function is successfully calling OpenAI and retrieving the response, but the poem count is empty. The problem is that the logging and error handling at line 63, the code logs um, OpenAI response received, but doesn't lock what's actually in the response. So there's a dot notation issue going on here. It should be data choices message content. Um, the response structure might be unexpected. Okay, no logging, debugging plan. So now it's going to debug that. Now it seems to just take the entire JSON and then it just you know gives us the data back. So we can, if it fails again, do another message and we can see what actually is coming back to fix it. So let's implement the plan. Now, the thing that you may be thinking about is, hey, if I'm using lovable AI, the integration is way simpler. And yes, it is giving you the illusion of simplicity, but at the cost of scalability, at the cost of money, and at the cost of being more restricted to what you can actually do with those AI APIs and those AI models. So while it, you know, may, turns the setup time from 10 minutes to five minutes by using the AI, you're going to create future problems down the road and migrations to more scalable solutions like this one, which is the ultimate best one I could ever imagine, are going to be more complex, are going to be more prone to errors, and it's usually easier to set things up correctly from the get-go. So it's a little bit of an investment, but it's going to pay off after you have a few users, and it's going to pay off in terms of time once you're trying to ship the next AI feature. So now let's publish this application or we don't even need to do that. We can just open the preview link and now we're going to be a developer again. Two finger click, go on inspect elements. Let's take a look at the network tab here and we'll see what's going on. Let's do test, generate the prompt. And now we'll see what this response is in here. So we'll take a look at that. Generate poem, it's still pending, right? As you can see here. So we'll see what's coming back. And now as you can see, there is an error coming back. OpenAI returned empty content. Now we don't know what content it returned. So I just want this API to return the entire response from OpenAI so we can understand what's going on here. So let's go back into the chat mode. Let's say I got an error again. Please just return the entire in tire raw response from open ai so i can see what is happening what i assume and then we do this in chat mode right so let's send this what i assume what's happening inside of here there may be an issue there may be a wrong parameter in the api call and we're getting an error from open ai that tells us how to fix it but because lovable is trying to retrieve a message, we can see the error message that OpenAI is sending to us to help us fix it. Let's take a look at this. So looking at the edge function logs, I can already see the raw OpenAI response. So it actually added logging for that, which is actually helpful for us here. So as you can see, content is empty, refusal now, finish reason length. So it seems like the tokens that we set in the AI model are used for thinking, which would might be assumption, um, for internal reasoning, and it's being cut off. So that's actually the problem. So it says the GPT-5 mini model used all 500 tokens for internal reasoning and had no tokens left to generate the actual poem content. Um, 
This is because you're using a reasoning model, GPT-5 Mini, which uses tokens for thinking. So now the solution is to use a different model or to increase the tokens. Now, because we want to save money, we'll keep the tokens, but we'll cut out the reasoning. So now let's implement the plan. So we have two options, keep the tokens, or, or slightly increase it, but then not use a reasoning model for simple text generations, unless you're building an AI vibe coding tool like Lovable inside of Lovable, you do not really need reasoning tokens or tokens for tool usage, unless you're building something very complex. So you can just cut this out to save tokens, save money, and you get the flexibility to set those things up very easily. So let's publish this or let's just open the preview here, which publishes instantly. Let's go on inspect elements again. Let's take a look at the network tab. Let's do test one, two, three. Let's generate the poem and let's see what's going on here. Let's hope it works. So the API call is still pending. And now it should come back as a success. 200 means success. So we'll see if it does. It's still pending. And as you can see, the poem was now generated successfully. So we can look into here and we can see in the response the preview data that we're getting back. So as you can see, now it generated the poem and our AI application is working. And we can copy the poem, we can create more poems. Take a look at this. So now we do have a fully custom open AI integration. We're going straight to the AI vendor. We're cutting out the middleman. You are saving thousands of dollars, maybe even a little bit more in the process as we're scaling. We have more comprehensive logging systems. If we'll take a look at this here, and I think I'm in the wrong project. So I need to go to the default project. I should be able to see the logging inside of here. Um, but only if we're storing them, our API call may not be storing them, but we can go into usage here and we can see the exact tokens we're using. We have a very comprehensive dashboard. Uh, we can create spend caps. We have more flexibility in how we're using the AI and for what models we're using it. And we can see which API keys are using what. So we have a great um, overview of this in here. It's pretty cool and we have a very nice scalable solution. So this is bringing your lovable application more towards scalability so you can handle more users and actually build something that's not just an MVP, but can be actually used in production without you worrying about paying a you know, crazy upcharge for AI usage and being restricted to the settings that you can do and being restrictive when it comes to observability of what's actually happening. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see if you want to see more videos about making a lovable application more scalable, let me know and I got to get some water right now. Take care. Bye.